Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy. And you know, you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we would love to hear from you. All you need to do is send us an email during our live show, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Today, we're going to have Janine Backstrom, who is the president and the executive director of Cana Family Institute. You can go to our website, Cana Family familyinstitute.com. We're going to be talking about the importance of families. We're going to be talking about the importance of restoring, repairing, connecting through community parish, yeah. through the parish, through community um, that we would all have our hearts set on fire and be supported as we live out the beauty of our Catholic faith. I love faith. what Janine says. There's great hope for the family. Mm. So if you need some hope, Stay tuned. You're going to hear Janine in just a little bit. But, Joe, I wanted to mention uh, this Saturday evening as we went to uh, Vigil Mass. Uh, it's always so beautiful at the cathedral. Yes. And, and Father uh, Jerebic does such a, a beautiful job in, in leading us. And at the end of Mass, we usually have a short announcement or two. But this Saturday... He said, I want everybody to sit down. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down, it's like, oh boy, uh -oh. something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so he stood up there and he was at, uh, you know, at the center of the sanctuary there and he had this beautiful glass image and Pope Francis' image was in it. And he said uh, that we have a special blessing that has come from Pope Francis for one of the members of our congregation, Mr. Joe Diliberto. I think we have a couple of pictures up there. He's the man in the suit. And... Uh, uh, Dr. Jack Boggan is there with him, but Mr. Delibert is the one in the suit of it. You're showing it. And he said that Pope Francis wanted to give a blessing to Joe, who's now 90 years old, mm -hmm. faithful Catholic husband. His wife passed away several years back. Beautiful family servant, 60 years in the Knights of Columbus. 60 years. In the Knights of Columbus. And, and he served even beyond the Knights right. of Columbus. And everybody knows this guy's a servant, worked in the firehouse shelter, making meals, and just serving 60 years, all that the Knights do signed up so many guys for the nights, um, just incredible. So Father Jerebic is saying, he wasn't aware that this was gonna happen, Mr. Delberto. It was a right? surprise. They didn't tell him because if he was on it in this way, he wouldn't have shown up. Right. That's what, that's what mm. his daughter told me, and his other daughters there, family members are there. And so he's kinda like, you know, what's going on? He's sitting there in his suit, he's always dressed so nice. When so I grow dignified. up, when I grow up, I'm gonna you be, wanna like be like You wanna be like him. I wanna be like Mr. Delberto. He is, he is so dignified. Anyway, so he, He's saying Pope Francis wants to give Mr. Deliberto a blessing, an acknowledgement. And so he brings over to him this beautiful image with Pope Francis and this Framed apostolic picture. blessing. It was beautiful. And, and he gives it to Mr. Deliberto, and Mr. Deliberto grabs it, and then he puts his head down in his, you know, hand, mm -hmm. and it looks like he's crying a little so bit. So you know? humble. And, and then he, he takes the image just, just not, and kisses Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody in the parish stood up. He got a standing ovation. Starts applauding. Yes. And, but I guess, I didn't know this originally when we were going to do this, but thinking about Janine and what she's going to share, it's the parish as a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a family moment. Mm -hmm. And all the families within the family were just a part of the Diliberto family, you yeah. know, celebrating this. And then we had a big party afterwards and everybody was there. And this whole concept of families within a family and supporting one another is just so critical. And it's so important for us all because, you, you know, when you go to your parish, sometimes it's like, where do I belong? How do I, you know, how can I connect dots that my faith would be strengthened and, and be in community within the larger community? Right. And so there are women's groups, sometimes there's men's groups, um, mo moms, mother's morning out yeah. groups, kind of things yeah. that you can plug into, couples groups. There's so many uh, marriage encounters, so yeah. many groups in parishes yeah. where we can plug into. For Mr. Deliberto, it was the Knights of Columbus where he was really able to activate his faith in a very okay. tangible way to well, so the, many. The Cana Family Institute is, is raising up men's groups, women's groups, and blessing the family. Janine Backstrom is here with us, executive director, CanaFamilyInstitute.com. Don't go away. You're going to be greatly encouraged. There's hope for you, hope for the family. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family. And you know, we would love to hear from you. So if you have a question for today's guest, Janine Backstrom, give us a jingle right here during this live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. Outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we will use your question right here on the air. Well, our beautiful guest, Janine Backstrom, is the president and the executive director of Cana Family Institute. And you might say, I've never heard of Cana Family Institute. You can go to their website, Cana Family Institute. Com. And Julian, I just want to say, if you're a priest and you're watching, stay tuned, because this could really bless your parish, you're a deacon, you're over the family committee in your parish, you really want to hear this show today. Well, Janine, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy, and we're delighted to have you. Well, thank you. I'm blessed to be here. Well, we want you to tell our family at home how you found yourself in this <laughs> ministry. Give us your story. Well, I think the Lord found me, actually, and it started when I was a young girl. I was very much in love with my faith, looking for a way to live it. And then as teenage years and college, things changed a little bit. You get married, and you think you've married Mr. Wright, which, right. which I have actually mm -hmm. married Mr. Wright. Right. But at a time in my life when I thought I, Mr. Wright needed to be Mr. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So I found that my husband wasn't what I wanted him to be. So I left him. I left him. We had two children, two boys at the time, three and four, because I just thought marriage was meant to be something that was between uh, people that were passionately in love with each other. I left and went home and was expecting to meet my mom at the door because my mom and I had a real close relationship and I, I, I knew she would understand. And when I got home, it was my dad who opened the door and I was petrified. Petrified because I, I didn't really have a relationship with my dad. He was a good man, was uh, patient, kind, gentle, faithful Catholic. I grew up in a Catholic family, but yet I never had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And I told him what I did, and he said, come on in. It's going to be okay. Wow. Praise the Lord. And at that moment, I met the Lord mm -hmm. and his mercy. Mm -hmm. um, he then later took my sons, our two sons, and myself. He said, would you think that they would be interested in hearing a talk on a, from a priest about Our Lady of Fatima, the pilgrim queen of, of um, Our Lady of Fatima was traveling through our area, mm -hmm. and we went to a parish. It was in the summer, 95 degrees, no air conditioning, and my two young sons and mm -hmm. me, and <laughs> to hear a talk by a very wise priest who explained holiness and our desire to be holy and what that means and it, it really means the cross well okay and one of the crosses that he mentioned might be was your spouse i was livid mm. your spouse your cross how could that possibly be when he's meant to be your knight in shining armor this doesn't feel helpful what i'm going through from <laughs> no. him yeah i i could not see i couldn't see past that yeah but I, I had resolved then to pray the rosary. We had prayed it when I was a child. Um, after dinner each evening, we prayed it as a family. So I took the rosary that they'd passed out there, and I went home and found a video, a VCR video, of still pictures of the yeah. mysteries of the rosary that went by yeah. on the TV. You're dating yourself. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and my two young sons, three and four, and we prayed the rosary starting that day. Um, and over the course of that time, God softened my heart. And I remember one night when I knelt down by my bed, I'd always prayed, um, but on the fly, mm -hmm. um, as it was convenient for me. And I, ju I just got to a point where I thought, okay, I just need to pray on my knees. So I got down by my bed and I prayed a simple prayer that said, Lord, whatever it is you desire, whatever you have planned for me however you want it to be, I will do it. Mm. Yeah. And this wave of peace came over me that I can't explain that left behind a sad, wounded young woman and I was a hopeful, encouraged young mom looking to see how God was going to work this out in our family. 
over the course of months, um, my husband had a, had a drinking problem and he agreed to um, go through an assessment of that. And well, come to find out, usually the spouse does too have, a, have some part to play mm -hmm. in that. Well, mm -hmm. that didn't always resonate real well it's with like, my... No, this is not my problem, <laughs> this is his problem. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. But I had a wise woman who was um, our counselor at the time and she said, you know, if you, you work at this, I, you, you, can, you can have a, a really happy and fulfilling marriage. This wasn't a Catholic. Wow. Um, she had hope. She had hope. And, and truth. And truth. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, okay, I'm holding you to that. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. promise, she said, I promise. Wow. So I, again, through prayer and, and the sacraments, I decided, okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I must, God wants something here. So we went through the counseling program and we went away on a camping trip, the four of us. And um, on that camping trip, it was like our family was renewed again. All of the hurt, all of the sadness, all of the, the worry as to whether or not we were going to, to make it were gone. Mm -hmm. God had, had shown his mercy again. Well, three more children were born after that period, and I, our oldest son at the time, he was in fifth grade probably by that time, was having difficulty in school, and nothing serious, but had a, had a reading problem, and so I was looking for resources, and it, it was coming down to the idea, because our faith was an important part, we, were, we wanted to have a place where they, he could have an experience of faith, and it eventually led us to homeschooling mm -hmm. in our family, which to me was, I'm a social person. I like to be with people. I just, I, I, I and do I have what it takes mm -hmm. to do that? That's mm -hmm. a big commitment. Mm -hmm. We started homeschooling and through that process, I met a group of women who were trying, working to help the family in, in parishes and do Mothers of Young Children program. And it was a program called Familia. Mm -hmm. And I started, I joined up with a, a women I didn't know that were in my parish who had this, you know, kids my age mm -hmm. who were looking to grow in their faith, some just starting out who didn't know their faith, some who were very experienced in prayer. And, and this a lot is of all women? All women okay. at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, my heart was beating so strongly, I would come home just burning mm -hmm. wow. with God's love, mm -hmm. explaining to my husband what was going on. And through those meetings of, of women and learning the church's teachings and, and really talking about them on a personal level, you know, one of our resolutions at one of those was to see how we could pray with our husbands. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Okay, we prayed meal, grace together and we would pray our rosary together but as a family, but right. never Greg and I. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And I just have to say, I was petrified to ask him if he would pray. I don't know what he would say. Mm -hmm. How, what would that be like? Mm -hmm. Would he say no? Um, but he's a gracious man and said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he just made it so easy. Mm -hmm. But it was that, those types of things that really like, pulled me where I wanted to go. Each of the women in the team were out looking to grow in holiness and to bring their family along and their kids and teach the faith to their kids. So we would have family parties together of, you know, for Our Lady's birthday on September 8th and have a big birthday right. cake and pray the rosary, you know, 20 families get together and mm -hmm. kids running everywhere. It was beautiful and those families today are still my really good friends. We've gone to first communions and graduations mm -hmm. and yeah. weddings, you know, weddings and yeah. grandchildren, we all have grandchildren mm -hmm. now. So it's been a beautiful journey. Yeah. So that brought me to what's, what at the time was called Familia. It was mm -hmm. the organization I was involved in. I became a trainer that helped the facilitators, the leaders of the parish groups. I became a program coordinator and helped start it across the country mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. what, what a beautiful testimony and what a recipient of God's grace. You know, you say your, your father, it's gonna be all right. And you said you were introduced to mercy, you know, mm -hmm. through your father and this woman of hope who mm -hmm. said, you know, it's gonna be all right as well. And before that, you know, the fullness of surrender on your own part, I, you know, how you explain that. I mean, the bottom line was you were saying, I'm going to do it your way, your time, whatever you want. And that you were really altered within about 30 seconds in terms mm -hmm. of your mind and being transformed and, and peace. God was really preparing me. As we all have, when we look back over our life, we can see how God is using moments. I, when I was a young girl, I loved the faith, I loved mass, I loved the saints and reading the stories. Um, at 14, I remember going to a movie um, 
called The Cross and the Switchblade. I don't yeah. know if you recall yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Wilkerson. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was an altar call yeah. at the end of the yeah. movie. I went mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and asked. That was instrumental in my conversion as really? well. Really? Yeah. yeah. But it I don't want to steal your thunder. No, right? but it was a <laughs> it was. powerful moment. Yeah. But what I, what, came, what I came back to was no support. Mm -hmm. no, no other support. Yeah. young people right. who were, at least that I knew of, there probably were, but there was no intentional means for us to do that. Whereas this Mothers of Young Children and, and that process gave us a way to find connection with other families so that that conversion that, you ta that I, yeah. I shared with you had yeah. a, a way to take root mm -hmm. right. and could flourish because it had <clears throat> support, which because we're all made for relationship right. on every level. So how did this develop into the Cana Family Institute or did it or some of the components of it? Mm -hmm. How did that, mm -hmm. how did your experience in all of this lead to the development of the Institute? Well, Familia was the program at the time, and um, it was part of the Regnum Christi movement of, in the church. Okay. And there was a moment in history when there was some trouble with the Legion of Christ and the founder that, that um, be, we all became aware of, which really was a, a took, it took a blow everything yeah. mm -hmm. um, and but it, there came but it didn't change all the truth no because I looked over Ragnum Christi mm -hmm. materials and the fruit of mm -hmm. that ministry was phenomenal mm -hmm. and the program that we use uses the teachings of the church we use the documents of the church okay. but what it came down to was you know people who how are we going to keep this going we don't have the resources anymore and a group of friends of mine we got together and we were like this is going to die mm -hmm. and we all looked at each other over our dead body. That's right. No, it's not. <laughs> over not our dead it. body. Yeah, right. So we started our own nonprofit, um, Cana Family Institute, approached our Archdiocese, St. Paul, Minneapolis, and asked to have ourselves recognized as a Catholic organization within the church. And that process is ongoing now. We have a bishop, um, Bishop Ronald Gaynor's on our board of directors, and we have a representative of our own archdiocese, Father Joe Bamanek, sits on our board to help us um, with that. I just want to pause for a moment. I want to remind you all you can call into the show now with your questions or with your comments. We'd love to hear from you. 1-800-221-9460 or 205-271-2980. So Cana Family Institute was born in 2012 and we purchased the Familia programs and made them the Cana programs mm -hmm. for the people that we serve. And there, over the years, there's been over 20,000 families that have been touched by the program. So in cities where we have been, there's, there's this groundswell of people that want to help and, and bring it to the parishes. We found two things that were really important is, that had gone away over the years. And one was a, what we call training. And training is the personal accompaniment right. that is so necessary that John, uh, that John Paul II talks about in families, evangelizing other families. France and even is real Pope big Francis on Francis is big yeah. on it, too where we have to reach out and walk on the sacred walk in the sacred ground of someone else's life. We have mm -hmm. to just be with them. And what we call training is that personal accompaniment, that intentional accompaniment of a facilitator in a parish who's accompanying her participants or his participants in a parish. We accompany the pastor so that he knows and can and feels the confidence of what it is that this fa marriage and family ministry of intentional teaching of the faith, but yet accompanying and encouragement along the way. Right. And sometimes so much in, in our faith journey is just, it's not that people are opposed to anything, they're just ignorant of it. Mm -hmm. And so for the pastor or the pastoral team or parish ministries or even dioceses to say, okay, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. This program is already, we mm -hmm. just need to connect the dots and get them in here. Mm -hmm. You're right? saying... So this is a parish-based ministry. Parish-based ministry. We go and ask the pastor if we, if we can help him with his marriage and family ministry. And a lot of times he'll say, that would be really helpful. Yeah, because I don't have one. <laughs> because I don't have one. Mm -hmm. right. So we're, we're actually filling a need that he has. And he sees the, the, the difficulties families have for living their faith and the accompaniment of, the, of everything that we do. What's the heart the heart of Cana Family Institute is the, the personal accompaniment, the, okay. the love for the church's teaching on marriage and family, and the, the idea that we're meant to, to reach out, to reach out to other families. Okay. So tell me, you talk about facilitators. Mm -hmm. So these seem to be the key people. If the parish approves this, the pastor mm -hmm. approves it, you're also linked in with the diocese. They mm -hmm. know about you. They know what's you. going on. So tell me about these facilitators, who they are, how they're trained, what their role is more fully, what they provide. 
Well, usually when we go into a parish, we uh, we want to meet with young families and we explain this to the pastor and he'll either if he's got a school, he'll introduce it through the school and we'll have a beginning program that we call the Temperament God Gave You, which is a real attractive program for moms because mm -hmm. moms want to understand their children. Right, right. They want to know what makes They're them tick. They're trying to figure out this puzzle. <laughs> it's like, Lord, help me. Yeah. Exactly. So we start out with a simple program. It's an eight-week session, mm -hmm. and they, um, they come wanting to know about their children, and they walk away knowing a lot about right. themselves. Mm -hmm. They learn how to pray, what it means to pray as a, as a group together um, to support each other as moms. They learn a little bit about the catechism that awakens their... They're the discovery of this beauty that they have talked about maybe their whole life but may, may, maybe never read anything. And then they learn about who they are as a child of God and what he, how he's made them to be and walk away with a resolution so that something happens in their home each mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Little change is made over time. Right. When they come to the end of that, they are, I, whatever you have next, I right. want right. that. And I'm going to bring my friends. And so mm -hmm. we have a, a little get together with some of those husbands and fathers or mothers of young children. And the thing for the women, I don't care. What, I, I'm looking for friends. Mm -hmm. I really need friends. Right. And for the men, it's this has got to be worth it. Mm -hmm. This be, this has got to be worth <laughs> it. Right. No, it's, and that's true. They want to yeah, know because I'm coming home <clears throat> from work and I'm really tired. The last thing I need to do is go to another group mm -hmm. and waste it's my time. It's kind of like shopping with your wife too. Is it, are we going <laughs> to get something? You know, like, what are we doing exactly? Like, no, we don't have to buy anything. We're just looking. <laughs> exactly. Uh, There's yeah. no file for that. <laughs> <laughs> So for men, it's is it the most important. They like to build things. Mm -hmm. They like to to mm -hmm. make something strong. And the most important thing that they want to build in their lifetime is their family. Mm -hmm. And they want to know that that they got they have what it takes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they come to. And we have little gatherings of men a little bit along the way, so they can see other men just like them. Maybe some older men that encourage them. Or, I want to be like that man. Mm -hmm. And same for the women. We have this little temperament program for them, so they can see other mothers. I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could. Oh, do I? Ha mm -mm, they're just so concerned, right. and, mm -hmm. and they want friendship and so, a network. Right. So, Let's just pause it at this point. It's KanaFamilyInstitute.com, building up the family by building up moms and dads. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. We want to hear from you. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. If you have a question for Janine, please give us a call during this live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. Outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we will use your question yeah right here on the air. What's going on in your parish for uh, women, for men, moms, dads? If you're a priest, how can we serve you? How can we help you? Give us a call. Janine, tell us how it works. Sure. Especially you mentioned like this virtuous circle. The virtuous circle. What does that, that mean? What are some of the key concepts? Okay. So a parish would, would purchase a sponsorship. They sponsor the, the Cana programs in their parish. And we, it's a four-year program for the, the, mo the mothers of young children and four years for the husbands and fathers. And we say it's a four-year program one year at a time because mm -hmm. that can seem overwhelming to, yeah. to a young family. How they often think, do oh they gosh. meet in the they, year? They meet during the school year 15 times, so okay. twice a month. Okay. It gives them a lot of time to gel and to, to become friends. So the whole program is set up with a, a path, a journey for a young mom and a dad to take. And it starts out with the beauty of who God made them to be as a mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. who God made them to be as a man. So they, they, they learn who the beauty that God made them to be. Second, the next year is they learn who they are as a husband and father, who they are as a wife and mother. Third year is who am I as a, a child of God? What's my conversation with him like? Prayer. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And the fourth year is who am I as a disciple of Christ? Oh. And they come to know what it means to, to share what they've been given. So through this whole process, we, we call it the virtuous circle. So like I said before, a lot of moms and dads come in, they're looking for friendships, they're looking for a way to be, build a good family. Right. They don't really necessarily come in to learn about 
God's plan for marriage and family. Mm -hmm. They're just looking for friends. Mm -hmm. So it's a discovery. It's a journey in discovery. Yeah. So they come in and they, they start to, to pray together. That opens their heart to Christ. We, we take advantage of all those inborn things that we've been given, the relationships yeah. that God has, has planned for our lives and wants us to, ha to be in for other people and for ourselves. And they discover maybe the church's teachings for the first time or actually hear what they are for the first time and they start to struggle with it. Yeah. So it's that, ver that discovery yeah. time. But it's not done in a way of a teaching or a, a lecture. It's, it's done in a conversation. Mm -hmm. We have the, the themes for each um, year. We use the documents of John Paul II um, on marriage and family, familiars, consortio, beautiful. letter to mm -hmm. families. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And, and yes, you could read every word to prepare for each meeting, but in and so, reality... So many have right. not even read a word. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see how right. beautiful it is. It's just it is. Great. And so all we need to do is maybe read a sentence out yeah. of it, and there's so much depth and meaning and beauty in it that it, it captures their heart. Yeah. So they discover the teachings of the church, and then they make a resolution at the end. So the one of the, of, of the, the years we use Letter to Families in John Paul II talks about Ferris love. I love that. Oh, mm. what a concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's up here. Right. And how do you live that in your home with your three-year-old? Right. And maybe four or five other ones running mm -hmm. around, too. Mm -hmm. How do I live <laughs> Ferris love? Well, one of the a common resolution from that time is... I'm going to smile at my husband when he comes home from mm -hmm. work. And we've you know, talked about that in, in time, come and see times, and the women, I want that. Or the husband's mm -hmm. like, I want that. Right. You it's know, not going to cost me anything. No, it's mm -hmm. not going to cost me anything, mm -hmm. but it's a little change of heart. It takes all of the Catholic teaching and brings yeah. it right here mm -hmm. to the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the discovery. And then they go and try it at home through their resolutions. Right. They come back. They, they work. Oh, how did that go? How did it go for you? Oh, well, how about if we do it this way next time? So there's that living of it that you're, you're mm -hmm. looking to do. Right. And then mm -hmm. you become, you start to value that whole understanding of the beauty of what God has created, the goodness and the truth. And then they want to live it. And they, and then after they, they live it for, and this is every year. So it's not like you get it all in one lesson. Mm -hmm. It's over time. Families start to transmit mm -hmm. just by their being a family. Right. Transmit the love of Christ to other families. Mm -hmm. So families evangelizing other families. That's is what the starts. circle. That's the circle. That's the Transmit. The circle. And they start to invite other families to participate to discover what they themselves have received. Wouldn't every priest want that in his oh, parish? I mean, yeah. what a help, what an aid, and to mm -hmm. really make it a family, a resource. It's beautiful. I've True. had many priests tell me, when I have familia in my parish, or the Cana programs as we call them right. now, I know those are the families that are my leaders right. in my parish. They're right. the families who are in my catechist program. They're Supplying the my altar servers. Following, mm -hmm. Yes, my mm -hmm. altar servers, m contributing money or mm -hmm. participating or praying. Right. Usually your catechists. Your catechists. I mean, they're the ones, they're the percentage that's working your church, mm -hmm. too. And well, we have an email for you. It says... I've worked two jobs and my wife also works and our two young children spend quite a bit of time in daycare. How can we grow together spiritually as a family when financial conditions keep us apart? And this is Rick from Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, that's a, a common, common place to, to find in a family. I think that what, ha what happened for us is, is when we were, had our young children, we were in the same, same place, working two jobs, um, trying to, to make ends meet that way. But it really started when I started to pray the rosary mm -hmm. and started to really take an interest in my prayer life that you start to learn how to, to see with the lens of faith, mm -hmm. how to respond to all of the things that yeah. come at you, yeah. that come at you. So a lot of times for the men, at least who participate in our programs, they come away after the first year I think differently now. Yeah. I think with the heart of the church. I think and, and with the filter of faith before I decide what programs mm -hmm. I'm going to be involved in, how I advance at work, how I treat my family, mm -hmm. and those things make better decisions. So y you, just, you keep doing what you're doing and you put on the lens of faith. Mm -hmm. That's really important yeah. because sometimes you know, we're just trying to function, put food on the table, keep the bills paid, get the laundry going. And it's, and then you kind of look at each other and go, and um, why are we doing this? You know, and, and we, couples need to reset their purpose mm -hmm. as to say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. why are we really doing this? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you don't want to raise those children, um, running them around, equipping them with all of the resources of the world, and you missed the goal, which is heaven. 
Right. You know, and then your children have no faith and your children. So it really is the time to evaluate as young couples and to, and to have an honest evaluation mm -hmm. of your life and to say, are we happy? Are we in a rut? You know, like, what's going on here? Like, yeah. how can we fix this? And we, we love God. It's not like we're opposed to God, but we need him in the center. Mm -hmm. We need the Blessed Mother in our home. We need to activate our faith. Mm -hmm. Because then you said it transforms that family and then how bigger that grows and everyone has a community and they come into it. What parish priest or bishop mm -hmm. wouldn't want this? We had a, several priests tell me at one, at one point or in just different times, you know, you can look at your family like a business. Like here in the United States, to look at your family like a business, what's your mission statement for your right. family? Like mm -hmm. write it down. And so we, we did. We wrote uh, to get to heaven and mm -hmm. take our children yeah. with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that simple act yeah. of doing that. Yeah. Years later, I look back. I look not that we're there already, but I, all of our decisions started to be aimed yeah. toward that end. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, you were sharing earlier about some of the content of what they're learning. You really can't write a good mission statement if you don't want it me means to be a human being. Mm -hmm. So you were saying earlier, we speak to the men and the women to speak, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to be a husband? Or what your roles mm -hmm. and, and so on. And I, I just think we're not sharing enough about this. We're not having conversations about mm -hmm. this. Nobody's accompanying us with this. But that really hits to the core of the problems in our society today. What is a human being? How do we serve one another? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then if we're, it gets really complicated, if we listen to the voices of the world and of the culture, because then it's kind of like, well, I'm not happy. I'm so out of here. You're not making me happy anymore. So I'm going to go find a new deal man because mm -hmm. like, you're not the ideal man and I need somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then our children and now our children saying, I don't want to be a boy. I want to be a girl. Mm -hmm. You know, so we... And so when the culture comes in and invades your home, that's more of a time when we as Catholics and Christians need to say, no, let's hold back all those forces yeah. of hell and darkness and recommit our life and our family and our marriage back to the Lord. Is that mm -hmm. why this is needed? Why is a ministry like this needed? To equip parents to be able to teach the faith to their children is really what it comes down to is that the parents are the first educators of their families. And they naturally, when they discover it for themselves, want to pass it on to their children. I think a lot of times, um, at least when I was younger, I had a mom ask me, well, how do you teach your children the prayers? Mm -hmm. um, we teach them the ABC. Yeah. Right? You pray with them. Right. You pray with them. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was almost like it was an academic exercise mm -hmm. to teach the prayers rather than a way of a family spirituality. This is what we do. We pray with each other at night. We go to mass together. We're kind. We serve other families. And so when we have people who are in our, our mission families, the leaders in the diocese that take these programs to the parishes, those are mission families. Their families have committed to be missionary families. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the mom maybe who's a trainer or the dad who's a trainer. It's the family who is wow. working as a missionary family to other families. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier that the parish is the family of families mm -hmm. and that we're called to reach out in the parish to other families. Beautiful. Sure. We have another email. It says, my husband and I have three children ranging in age from one to four years old. My, my husband has no interest in sharing the faith with our children, saying whatever I want is fine. Many times he won't even attend mass with us. How do I encourage my husband to take a more active role in the faith formation of our children? And this is Brittany from Colorado. I would say, Brittany, that you have the grace of your marriage sacrament as your best asset. And that as you strive to be holy and to, to learn to teach your children, your husband will come along because he's going to be watching you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be seeing the, the beauty and the virtue that you are living with him and your children. And it, God is the winner in the end. Mm -hmm. Is this a question that comes up when the women meet together? I mm -hmm. mean, you must hear this a lot in the group. And it's really important how we answer that and how we could possibly bring this to a husband without being pushy or, you know, so, but this is something that's conversed about and it really, they're accompanied through it. They feel supported in it. You got experiences there. Mm -hmm. We do because a lot of times the program in a parish starts with the moms. Um, they'll start a mom's group and inevitably it's, what have you got for my husband? Right. What have you got for my husband? Right. 
And because of the way the teams are set up and the resolutions that, that we make, they're based on the family. So it's some of the resolutions might be to gather your families together at, at Thanksgiving and have a Thanksgiving Day celebration or a, a Feast of Our Lady celebration so that the men can be around the other men and mm -hmm. feel comfortable because they're looking at it thinking there's no way right. I can do this. Mm -hmm. right. But they just they need other men who they can identify with and they can say, okay, let's yeah. just see. You know, yeah. When I hear questions like that, I often respond to the, to the woman, to the wife, well, keep your ears open for a men's uh, conference that's going to go on or something because maybe that's just something they, they can go to and a lot of good things happen. But to have intentionally in your parish mm -hmm. through the, the Cana Family Institute mm -hmm. something going on all the time for guys, you know, you could just say or, or pastor can say or one of those guys gets up and gives a testimony and say, this is where I was. I just visited this group. It's great to be with a bunch of guys in this way. So that's always available instead of once a year a conference. Exactly. Critical. And the men who are on the leadership team in the branch in the, in the diocese where we are, they are reaching out to the men. Mm -hmm. So if the wives are saying, you know, what have you got to, for my husband? Could you give my husband a call or can we, could you invite him to something? And we have men who work on the ministry team that actually invite the men to come to things. So it's not always the wife who's pushing mm -hmm. her husband. Mm -hmm. It's there's a way that we can invite. Yeah. You know, when you, you first shared about, you know, it's a four year kind mm -hmm. of program, mm -hmm. but it's one year at a time. Mm -hmm. You just, and I thought, wow, that's a lot of years and a lot of time. But you know, there's a lot of lonely People, mm -hmm. people are not connected, and like you said, it's so much based on friendship. And there's a lot of lonely guys, a lot, a lot of lonely women, although they may <coughs> have a lot of kids or whatever's going on. And like you say, it's about this friendship, it's about a conversation, it's about having good food, spiritual food to be there, mm -hmm. and so then it's really not that long, because it, no. as you said, I think you said people are famished for this. They're mm -hmm. starving, mm -hmm. because it, we're, it's about friendship, it's about joy, and friendship is something that's built into us as human persons, that relational aspect of who we are. So we tap into that and help them discover that, that relationship that God wants for us and for other families. And that's what we, we intentionally do because we're so hyper-connected now. It used to be I'd call my girlfriend on the phone, mm -hmm. we talk for three hours. Mm -hmm. Now you just chat, right. you send a few pictures, and I think we're parched mm -hmm. for relationship. We're just parched for it. Yeah. And we need to have women who understand and see the beauty of God's love for them and know that he's created them for more, that they, they start to prioritize the things that get on their calendar too right. with their family so that the things that can ha help their spouse find their way on the calendar for him. Yeah. And men are, are no different. They, they actually were the first in the garden to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. right. They were first. So it's not that men don't have that relationship, they just have it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So they have that secret weapon that we try and touch on a little bit with men in a different ways that attracts them to come and build their strong family. Yeah. You were mentioning earlier, if we could just touch some of these things that are already in there. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody could get beyond speaking about prayer and actually pray. Actually pray. And that's pray. what it seems like you're, you're doing is that you're giving, you're explaining it, you have people that have experienced it, you're saying this can really be done, and then when they do it, all sorts of power is it's really unleashed. released. Mm -hmm. It's unleashed. How's the reception going with parishes, with bishops, and how is this spreading? People want it in their parishes. When the priests understand what it is that's going to come and help them with their families, they want more of it. I have a, a, a friend who's a priest, and he said, this is what, what will bring formation to the parents that we have in our parish. This is where the people that will come and, and bring the, the vitality, the catechists, and the action in my parish. They're the people who are going to, to be the leaders here. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. start out as young families and uh, we put them on a trajectory. That's why it's only a four year program. It seems long, but at the same time, it, there's, there's a lot of moving parts in it that help them discover the fullness of who they are. It's mm -hmm. like when you have, you get married and you think, oh, like when you all got married, yeah. did, thinking about your 45 years of marriage, <laughs> Oh that my. would have been overwhelming. That would have been <laughs> overwhelming. Yeah. But along the way, um, one, day at a time. one day at a time, mm -hmm. you discover all the beauty that is in there mm -hmm. that help give you hope for what God has planned for you. Mm -hmm. And as you discover who I am as a woman, who am I as a man, it awakens in you the desire for that deep relationship with Christ, which is what it's all about, yeah. mm -hmm. is when you have that, everything is multiplied. Even when you have children, it's, it's, love doesn't 
like, like divided. Right. It's multiplied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who especially would you want to get to you today or go to the website that can implement this? Who are you looking for in particular? I'm looking for parents of parents and other adults who are interested in bringing this to their parishes. I'm looking for benefactors who want to make this possible for their own sons and daughters, their grandchildren. I'm looking for bishops who want to support us in their prayer and their encouragement to help help the parishes that they serve be parishes of families, families reaching other families. Well, I, well thank you yeah. so much. You knew you that answer, that's for sure. That was great, you did such a beautiful job. Thank you. Well, if you want to hear more from Janine Bactrim, all you need to do is go to canafamilyinstitute.com. Well, she did a beautiful job, and I'm sure you'd like to bring this beautiful ministry to your parish. Well, stay tuned for Joan Lewis and Father Leonard. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Thank you. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family. And, you know, we would love for you to join us live right here at home and be a member of our studio audience. We have some people in our audience today. All you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department, and you would email them at pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them the jingle at 205-271-2966 and arrange your pilgrimage to EWTN. We would love to have you. Well, right now we're gonna go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome to all of you at home. On this Monday, after the penultimate weekend of the Holy Year of Mercy, and of course we can say, my gosh, where has all this time gone? You look at the special events, the papal audiences, and the special jubilees and masses, and even the moments like Pope Francis's Mercy Fridays, where he visited, as a surprise, he would visit a uh, home for the elderly, for children, for the sick. He also visited prisons. And now it's important to remember, by the way, that the Pope announced this Jubilee year on the second anniversary of his pontificate, on March 13th of 2015. Now, looking back at the weekend, Saturday we saw a packed St. Peter's Square right behind me, of course, and the Holy Father had very heartfelt thanks for an important group of people, about 600 of the total 4,000 volunteers who helped foreigners from visitors from all over the globe in this holy year. And he said, thank you. You've been fantastic. Thank you for your precious service that allowed so many pilgrims to give life to this experience of faith in a very positive way. And then, of course, also Saturday, the Pope had the last special Saturday audience, and he asked his people to be sure to continue to show mercy, and most especially in by being inclusive. Now, Sunday, interestingly enough, the, the holy doors of three of the four papal basilicas in Rome were closed on Sunday, and holy doors all over the world. So you had cathedrals, dioceses, shrines. They were also all closed last Sunday. But this Sunday in St. Peter's, the Holy Father celebrated a mass for the poor and the homeless. And in his homily, he said, we should be worried when our consciences are anesthetized and we no longer see our brother or sister suffering at our side. And we don't notice the grave problems of our world, which have simply become familiar refrains from news stories. And on Friday, he had held a special audience for the poor and the homeless. And Saturday, as a matter of fact, there was a concert for them in the Vatican. And the Pope called the, the homeless and the poor. He said, they're at the heart of the gospel. They're concrete people. They are not useless objects, but precious persons. And it's important to state, by the way, that these poor and homeless had front seats at the concert, and they had the best seats at the papal mass. So lots of amazing things happening, but time's up, and back to you at home. Thank you, Joan. Another moving report there from Rome and so much focus on the closing of the Year of Mercy just ready to come upon us. And what have we learned during this time? Your thoughts, Father? 
Well, it's been a beautiful year, you know, a year of grace, a year of growing, or a year of receiving the mercy of God, first of all, and then a year of growing in that mercy as well. You know, so many of, the, of our homilies as priests and, you know, the bishops have been focused on mercy and the mercy of Jesus and meeting Jesus who is merciful, who receives us as we are, who's so patient and good to us, who loves us so much. And, and then also uh, giving that mercy, teaching people how to yeah. be merciful people like Jesus and have merciful hearts. And, yeah. and it goes very much with, uh, with the Kena Family Institute and all the, the great work God is doing in and through it, yeah. you know, because it, it is, it, it's a work of mercy, yeah. bringing mm-hmm. families together. And mercy is so, is so important, so necessary for the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, and it's Catch important right. to know that mm-hmm. in cathedrals and shrines mm-hmm. all over the world, the doors close this Sunday. Right. But all the doors are open to the confessional. Booth, That's right. right. They're always open. So they're always open, and our mm-hmm. hearts should be open. Our hearts. Our hearts should be open. We ha- need hearts of mercy open mm-hmm. all the time, and that's what this year has prepared us for: is mm-hmm. to uh, have a, a big heart of mercy, open with God's love, and looking with at our brothers and sisters in Christ and everyone with mercy with, you, you listen with the eyes of Jesus Janine's testimony yeah mm. and she you know began by sharing about the breakdown in That's her right. own marriage mm-hmm. leaving that marriage mm-hmm. going back home leaving the relationship mm-hmm. never divorced um, and seeing in her father who welcomed her in and said, you know, With daughter mercy. it's going to be Doors okay and, mercy. Yeah. and that mm-hmm. she learned divine mm-hmm. mercy through That's the father right. there And then you just hear her story, and here she is pioneering a movement Mm -hmm. within parishes Mm -hmm. for the nurturing of men and women, their marriages, their Mm -hmm. families. But but look where it began. I mean, it didn't begin on a nice note, you know, a a really difficult note. But see, that's God's mercy. God God not only wants to forgive us, Mm -hmm. but he wants to lift us up. He wants to make things good again, Mm -hmm. you know, raise us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the power of of the resurrection and so much mercy in the power of the resurrection. And, uh, and then, yeah, you know, going back to this movement of, of families, um, uh, this is just a wonderful opportunity for, for people in the parishes to get involved, to come together. You know, sometimes um, uh, some people, they can feel that they're, that, that they're not uh, included. They can feel like outsiders. Uh, but uh, because and then, and then when I go to parish, there's always the same people doing the same mm-hmm. things, you know. I go, right. I go back to my home parish, you know. I've been gone for years. Ten years. The it's the same people, you know. They're right. 15, 20 years yeah. older. It's like, yeah. oh man. Yeah. But th- this is, gives the opportunity for everybody to come in, right? You know. And she's really focusing mm-hmm. on young yeah. mothers, young fathers, mm-hmm. learning or relearning yeah. what it means to be a human being, sure. what it means to be a mom, what it means mm-hmm. to be a dad hearing the teaching of the right. church, especially through St. John Paul II. Mm-hmm. And that's such great leaven oh, yeah. in the parish. And so much healing. And, you know, you had all families coming here with their brokenness. And then you have other families who've been in the, in the, in the program, in the formation for a little while longer. And they, have for, they offer their, their experience, their time to them. They could empathize. All works of mercy, all, yeah. all great things going on there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful work. If I was a pastor, I'd bring it into. Well, and it, I earth. like what you shared. And then, you know, how those people, then the children become mm-hmm. the altar servers. Everyone's yeah. working the parish right. and hitting on all cylinders and other people coming in. You know, because it is true that I even think it's less mm-hmm. than 10% of the people that work mm-hmm. the church. But it's like, let's get new breath, new life. And like if you were from a mm-hmm. large family, it's no fun if you're the oldest sister and you're making everything happen for everybody right. else. Like That's right. everybody needs to do their part, yeah. right? So yeah. everybody has so many gifts and talents that were given by God and we need to put it into the service of the mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Misericordiae Voltus. I think that mm-hmm. was the document that the Holy mm-hmm. Father wrote for this year of mercy. And that's been so tremendous in my life. Just that title alone, the, the heart of God mm-hmm. is revealed in the face of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Misery, the, even the misery of the heart. Mm-hmm. We, we have misery. But it's like the Lord wants to come and just take hold of mm-hmm. us and, and reveal his face to us mm-hmm. and give us hope. And uh, we want all of our people to have hope in every right. marriage, every family member to mm-hmm. have hope. Right. There's hope in him. There's so much. And yeah. The year of mercy isn't quite over yet. So get no. all that you yeah, can. Yeah, receive it. And build open your from hearts there. and, you know, take it all in. Amen. Yeah. Well, Father, why don't you give us a prayer sure. and a blessing? Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the good work you're doing in the Cana Family Institute. 
And we ask you to give increase to this work, God, so that it spread in other parishes. And Lord, we also pray that you help us to be, that help us to receive more of your mercy, but that you also help us to have merciful hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all with his mercy, with his peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, we thank God for your life as we move closer and closer to Thanksgiving and Advent and Christmas. Isn't it wonderful to be a part of the family of God? Be encouraged. God's plan for you is for good and not for evil, to give you a future that is filled with hope. So keep it on EWTN. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Bye now.